Hello there, this is Kush Sharma from Creative Pad Media. Let's quickly see how to make the background white here. I've given you this image, you will be able to download it in the, and the link has been given in the description. Let's also quickly verify that yes, this is indeed not white, even though we can quite clearly see things. If we use this color picker here, and just use the eyedropper to click somewhere here, you can clearly see that most of these colors are not pushing towards the white, right? They're somewhere in the gray area. So let's turn them into white. The first step will be, we will not be working on the original. So just duplicate this because we will actually be needing the original later on. So we're gonna do everything on the copy. So when this copy is already highlighted, just go to image because the tool that we'll be using is inside this part here, adjustments, and it's called replace color. It's here at the bottom. And that's exactly what it does. It's gonna replace these grays with white. And how this process works is, first of all, you have to tell Photoshop where these grays are. So the moment this tool opens up, you get this eyedropper. And now Photoshop is telling you, okay, tell me where exactly the grays are. So I click somewhere here. And the moment I do that, you're seeing some black and white thing here. This is just telling you right now, what is your selection? Anything that is shown in white is your selection according to the sampling data that you're given. And anything that is black is not gonna be selected. And this is gonna be important because ultimately when we move these sliders at the bottom, they will only affect the, the white parts or the selected parts, okay? So maybe I can now, I've given it one from one part, I can also use this plus eyedropper to give it another part because we want most of the area except for the couch to be white, right? We wanna change the entire background. So maybe I can give one, from here, one from here. And you can see, right? Now we're getting close to what we want. We can give it from here. And at some point, this is gonna happen that a bit of the whites will creep into your product also because the product also has those colors. You can't help it. So it's a game of balance. And one of the tools that can help you achieve this balance is this fuzziness slider. So after you've given it one or two sampling uh, data from one or two areas, you can just move this slider and this basically is increasing the tolerance, decreasing the tolerance. And you have to select or stop at that part where you feel most of the background has been selected. But at the same time, the, your main subject is still kind of black, okay? So a bit of it is gonna creep in. You can see some whites coming here. No problem, we have a solution for that later on, okay? But I can stop somewhere, but at least I can see, yes, this is a couch, right? So maybe something like this is fine. Now we can see, most of the background has been selected. And now what we can do is, we don't need to worry about the hue and saturation slider since we're not changing really the color here. All we need to do is just bump up the lightness of these grays. So we just have to mainly use the lightness slider and just increase it. So we're increasing the lightness of the entire shot or not the entire shot, the one, the white areas that we had selected here. So a bit of the couch has also increased in brightness, right? We're gonna correct that, but if you see the background, we've been able to achieve that properly. So I can now hit OK, and in order to correct this issue that we're facing, what we'll have to do is just make a selection of this couch and then remove this effect from there. And how we can do that is, we're not gonna be doing that from this layer because this altered things a bit. We're gonna go back to our original, use one of the basic selection tools like quick selection, and simply, make a selection of the body of the couch because that's where usually the, the main problem came, right? Not on the legs and the shadows. So we don't need to select that. And this was a fairly easy selection to make. And now what we can do is we can go enable this layer again. So we've basically used this original layer to make the selection, but now we've gone back to our copy layer on which we had used replace color. And then we can use a layer mask. So I can just open up a layer mask and double click on the layer mask and invert. Now, if you don't know how layer mask works, that's completely fine. I'm gonna show you one resource at the end of this video, which will help you understand that. Otherwise, if you just need it for some purpose, just copy what I did. Open up the layer mask, double click on it, and click on invert, okay? But basically what this is doing is, anywhere you see black now here, it's hiding whatever we did with that replace color on that part, which is mainly the body of the couch. So now if we compare things with the original, the effect of whatever we did has only come on the background. And we can again verify by opening up the color picker. And now if we click anywhere, you can see most of it is completely white. Right, so we've achieved that. One problem you can often face is if I just zoom in, 
because we did make a selection, sometimes the edges can be a bit jagged. So what you can do here is again, double click on the layer mask and then just feather the selection. That means we are just making the edges slightly soft. So don't push it all the way like this. That's gonna to become too soft. Not even this, that's again too soft or something like this. And that's just gonna make it look much more realistic and much smoother. And that's how you make a background white using the replace color tool. I hope that you liked it. Now there are things like layer masking and all these things come in between. For this, you really have to understand the basics of Photoshop. So I've got a completely free Photoshop course for you, which has 20 videos. I'll be giving the link in the description for this course. So do check it out. It's really, really completely free. There are no hidden costs at all. So I hope that you like this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.